and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of Orzov Hero. You may have, you may remember this deck that we played just a little bit before, um, before Theros was released, and now it's updated with a couple of sweet Theros cards. We have Heliod Suncrowned and Athreos Shroudvale over in the main deck with some more sideboard stuff over here. Um, but yeah, if you remember us playing this last time, I was really impressed with it. It felt, um, you know, it felt even better than I really thought it, that it would. Um, and it was really enjoyable to play. And my favorite card in the deck, we got a third one in here, is Tome of the Guild Pact. You know, whenever we cast our multicolor spell, draw a card. This thing was pretty awesome. And plus, it was a, a mana rock that, you know, helped ramp us and get us more mana. So the goal of our deck is, is you know, Obviously, of course, Hero of Precinct 1 and then Multicolor, you know, it's it's a hero deck. So you play Hero on turn 2, then you play Multicolor spells, you make a whole bunch of 1-1s, one kill them with the 1-1s. One That's obviously the plan. To help out that plan, we have Corpse Knight each time we make a 1-1 one -one, or just any other creature, they lose a life. We have Cruel Celebrant. Whenever any of our creatures die, including those 1-1s, one -ones, they lose a life, we gain a life. So we can do, like, a lot of, of damage with those. We also have the Pillless Pontiff that was pretty impressive that allows us to sacrifice creatures like those extra one ones to give it death touch and indestructible but that could just be a way to machine gun down our opponent with cruel celebrant or two in play we could just kind of start sacrificing our stuff and getting a lot of triggers that way uh seraph of the scales is just a really good flying body in the air that also produces a couple of afterlife tokens whenever she dies um that you know can put some pressure on the opponent soren brings back things like soren works really well with hero bringing back hero or just other creatures that ha did already die so as far as our new cards heliod when it says whenever we gain life like we're not heliod's not going to be a creature too often um, but whenever we gain life put a plus one plus one counter on a creature or enchantment so basically whenever like cruel celebrant whenever cruel celebrant triggers or Soren giving yourself lifelink, Othakaya, that kind of stuff. Whenever these things gain life, we can put counters on our creatures. You know, make, uh, really like the main thing to make bigger is Pitiless Pontiff. Because the bigger you make Pitiless Pontiff, the more difficult it is for them. Because they just have to chump block it. Because you can't kill it uh, if, if you can just give it indestructible. But just your other creatures also. Make them larger. Athros is going to be pretty exciting to play. Um, we get to put coin counters on our creatures, and then whenever a creature with a coin counter on it dies, you put it back onto the battlefield under your control. I could see that being like a, a combo also with Pitiless Pontiff. You know, like we put a coin counter on something, and then we sack it to Pontiff, and then bring it back. You know, maybe we put that coin counter on like Seraph of the Scales, and we sack it to, to Pontiff, and we bring back a Seraph of the Scales, and we get the tokens also. I don't know. I think we could just kind of do some cool stuff here. We can also make a, a good attack, profitable attack with like an unbreakable formation also. There's all just a lot of cool little synergies in the deck. And like I said, I was impressed with it last time. So excited to play it again with our new gods. So it's a donation deck. We're going to be playing it through a league here. Play it till we win five or lose two, whatever happens first. So let's, let's uh, get started. No, Soren is definitely a lot better than Revival. Um, yeah, yeah, Soren. Yeah, I not a huge fan of Revival because Re Revival is, doesn't do anything unless you have a creature in the graveyard to bring back. You know, like the other part of it, Revenge, isn't really important. Or maybe it's the other way around, Revenge Revival, like the Revenge part, whatever. Y'all know what I mean. Um, Soren can just you know do stuff. You know, like uh, sometimes they play a planeswalker minus put the planeswalker to one loyalty you know like a teferi bounce something like that and then you play your soren kill it soren gives your creatures all that lifelink and everything too just a good solid card yeah yeah i, I wish the new fleece main lion was better as well I'm right there with you, Matthew. I wish it was, they made it a little bit better. Island, island. Island, island, island.
Mountain. Shepherd is better. Uh, exile. That's unfortunate. Shepherd is better than Seraph of the Scales when you have a bunch of creatures that are in play that are going to be dying. But Seraph of the Scales is, is like a better card as an individual threat and also just works really well with. Um, you know, works well with Soren. Shepherd does not work well with Soren because Shepherd exiles your. You know, like when you when your creature dies, then it exiles the creature that died. Yeah, I mean, if I, if I really need to take a day off, Simon, I will. Uh, that's not a good play by my opponent. It's not a good play by them. If I minus Soren, then Soren's gonna die to the Sphinx. <laughs> what a mess I've made. He Heliod's going crazy. Now that the Nyx lands aren't on Arena yet, so we said they think they'll be there. In a, they'll be here in a couple of weeks, but they're not here yet. I could have done double lifelink. I don't think that does anything. Yeah, you you can get you can get what three of the next lands right now in like if you get the planeswalker decks, like like the code for the planeswalker deck and you redeem it on arena, then like the Elspeth one has the white one and the Ashiok one has the Islands and swamp, right? But you can't get. Is that correct? But then you cannot get uh, the other two, like forest and. Forest and mountain yet? I don't know. That I'm. I don't know if that information is correct, if it, that I was just saying. If anybody wants to. His Heliod's been sweet. Heliod Cruel Celebrant. That's a combo. Okay, so that is correct how I said on the lands. Thank you so much, Metavari. Could this deck work without Hero? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you could you could have a little bit more freedom with card choices also if you don't play Hero. I think it... I don't know if that would make it better, though. But it could work.
how do I have lethal here? Oh, because cor Corpse Knight makes them lose a life whenever I minus. So Corpse Knight makes, makes them lose a life when I minus two, bring in Celebrant. Yeah, okay. Okay, yep. And then we have the Corpse Knight die. Your body, not your soul. Or they have to block. Corpse Knight dies, triggers Cruel Celebrant, they're dead. Or I could, yeah, I could activate the castle. Two. I forgot about the Corpse Knight trigger for a little bit, so I was trying to think of like how I was going to do the other point of damage. Um, forgot about the Corpse Knight for a little bit. All right, so we have like a like a blue red control. The spark seemed pretty good against the stuff my opponent was playing. Seemed better than Othakaya. Even though Othakai is a lot better against Bone Crusher Giant. <laughs> Casual 41 to 0, life total, final life total. Um, I mean, I kind of want to play Duress. I mean, they, they just got all these spells, so like, I want to play Duress. Elspeth Conquers Death is probably really sweet. Maybe we play that over to Spark. Yeah, Duress would help. I know Heliod did some good stuff there, but without Cruel Celebrant, Heliod's not doing a whole lot for us. I'm, I think I may just take out Heliod for this, for like one Heliod. All right, and what about you, Athreos? I'm going to take you out just because you're ex really expensive against the deck with counter spells. We get a couple of Duress in. What about you, Unbreakable Formation? I don't need you as much either. Let's get these. All right. So there we go. Found some ways to fit some duress in. No, I don't think Tesa is. Honestly, like to be honest, I don't think Tesa is very good. I wouldn't recommend playing Tesa. I just. It, it's not a strong enough card for standard. The ability that it has, a four mana 2 4 with that ability, is just not, is not strong enough for standard. All right, so opt, insight, negate. Bone Crusher Giant is quite good against me. Yeah, Thass is awesome. Yeah, Thass is very good. Yeah, I like Elspeth too. I'm an Elspeth fan. I think that's a strong card as well. This one doesn't look good for us, even like if we resolve a Planeswalker. I, I don't think that Soren doesn't beat Chemister's Inside and Opt. So this one doesn't look good for us. My heart is hollow with scorn for you. Hey, TDO. White Cavalier plus Elspeth Conquers Death. That's a good combination. Yeah, that's a good combination. Yeah, Ashiok's really good too. 
I yeah, I think I think a lot of the new cards are kinda underrated right now. Well, we've only drawn lands. We kept these four, right, and three lands. All right, now we're, we're five for five drawing lands. Six for six. I mean, Soren, um, right now, just bringing back Corpse Knight, you know, like, that's not, it's not good enough against Bone Crusher Giant. <laughs> Bone Crusher Giant is, like I said at the beginning of the game, Bone Crusher Giant is very good against me. Because, yeah, our deck is filled with bears, yep. We're filled with two mana creatures with two toughness, that's, that's just the definition of our deck, basically. Now, underrated means a, that's something that is better than the perception that other people have of it. Something that's underrated means that people may think it's like a, a 5 out of 10, but it's a, actually a 7 out of 10. Under, yeah, so underrated means it's better than what people think it is. Yeah, I agree, Oni. I think I do think Theros is the best that they've designed in a while in terms of balance as well. The I I mean, while I like playing Satessian Champion in the in and the enchantment and stuff, I like playing it, but that's the one thing about their set that they didn't um, balance that well in my opinion. I think that that is still that's still too strong. I wish they would stop making those kind of cards. That's a good point, Cody. I didn't really consider that Tasa is better with Woe Strider being in the format. The Woe Strider makes Tasa better. It's a fair point. Um, so, like, if you have Woe Strider in play and Tasa in play, and then yet yeah, then the afterlife stuff, like you're talking about. If you have all of that in play, then taste is better than normal. So 
So of course this game was decided about drawing six lands and our with our first six our first six draws being six lands. <laughs> Didn't have gas, but that it, a there and then B Bone Crusher Giant just dominating because I only had one two two creature. Chemistry's insight's really good too. What are we doing with sideboard now? Flame sweep? Oh, we did bring in all these duresses. Oh, the Kaya is, is good against Bone Crusher Giant. That's the, you know, that, that is good there. Maybe we just play it. Try to have Bone Crusher Giant not kill me as much. How do we need more Heliod? How would Heliod have, it, what would Heliod have done at all in that game? It wouldn't have done anything. Hey, okay. I mean, Tome of the Guild Pact is our is our main card, right? Like, Tome of the Guild Pact is something we haven't drawn yet, but that's our card. Right, let's try this. Yeah, it did it did really good the first game with with Cruel Celebrant. Um, it's just that game. You know, we didn't have Cruel Celebrant and didn't really have any creatures, and they wouldn't have done anything. Have to have Bone Crusher Giant, don't they? Gotta have it. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. I want to get Tome of the Guild Pact in play before they counter it. I hope they don't have any bounce. Bone Crusher Giant should not inflict damage on creatures with flying. That'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, how do you stomp at a creature with flying? Okay, I like that. Hey, Cody, thanks for the tier one sub. Brand new tier one sub. 
Look at that. Hawkeye's purring. He's all excited about it. Looks like that's number 14. I was behind. Thank you, Cody. Um, this is whenever a creature dies or is put into exile. Okay, or is put into exile. That's good. Sure. This Athreos is almost a creature. Oh, wow. Ugh. That was a rough dragon fire. Hmm. That's pretty rough. Okay. I guess they can name Sorin. I sort I sided it out of Soren. Doesn't have any activate abilities, right? No. So that's cool. Just... Hawkeye is getting better. He is getting better. He's not perfect or anything like that, but he is getting better. The medicine's helping out. No, I don't think my opponent should be playing Spyglass. Um, All right, so they kill my celebrant, it comes back. That animation was pretty sweet. Can't find a deck you enjoy. I mean, it's only it's only been two two days of the new format. Keep searching, you'll find something. So we can have Heliod give Athreos lifelink. Atheros was a creature there for just a little bit. Alright, I kind of used that as like a test against a counter spell, but then I realized I have duress in hand, so I probably should just use that as a test. Yeah, calm down, Atheros. Not yet. Now. I 
I think it was better to give the Atheros lifelink than just play another Celebrant. I think. You know, it gives us a, a good little buffer there. At our life total, it puts a counter on this Celebrant. So it doesn't die to, like, Stomp and Flame Sweep and stuff like that. Maybe I should be using the Guild Mages for him. Oh, you can't target yourself? a lot of triggers. Alright, so now we have like this 5-6 Cruel Celebrant that they need to kill, but if they kill it, then it comes back. Ferox plus Shadow Spear? Okay. Yeah, I kind of forget. Sometimes you just forget about Null High Ferox. No, we don't have the new Puppy Dog in the deck. I guess because of the, like, Soren and, you know, Athreos and stuff, like, bringing stuff back, the Puppy Dog shuts that down. Yeah, you can always decide. Whenever you have triggers, you can always decide the order of your triggers. GG's. Um, <clears throat> as far as on Arena, the way to do that on Arena is you have to go to the settings, the gameplay settings. It does, one of the settings in the gameplay settings says auto order triggers, triggered abilities, and, um, it's like default selected, so you have to deselect it, so it does not auto order, and then you choose how to order Three mana artifact, tap for any color mana, gains a life when you control a god. That does work pretty well with Heliod. I don't... I don't think that would move that to be... I don't know if that would move that quite to be standard playable, but that does work well with Heliod. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely times that you need to order your abilities different ways, so... What's up, boy? Thanks for getting the Twitch Prime sub in here. Another new Twitch Prime sub. Y'all are awesome. Thanks, boy. Rude. Pontiff is usually like the card you want to play last. You usually want to play Pontiff later on in the game when you play it and you still have mana up to activate it. But I didn't want, you know, like I basically played it like as like the card to trade with Butcher. That card's good. They're just Bone Crusher Giant Tribal. Rakdos Fire Wheeler was the original Bone Crusher Giant. Hmm. Hawkeye is improving. The medicine's helping out. He is improving. He's not... I wouldn't say he's back to being fully healthy or anything yet. 
He's still not eating very much, but he is improving. Like, he hasn't won a bad pet this much in a long time. Pretty sure you're supposed to attack first. And then kill one of the one ones. This form just always gets me. I would ideally I would like to play double celebrant. The really greedy line is just play Sora and bring back Hero this turn. That's the really greedy line. This is the not greedy line. Another not greedy line would be Sora and bring back Seraph. That would also be not greedy. Yeah, I just realized I have like. I'm playing against T Steves. That's cool. <laughs> Last time I played the deck, we went for the greedy plays. Greedy plays are fun, they have that very high upside. We're pretty close to dying. Getting back Pitiless Pontiff means that we can gain two life and speed if we need to. Ah, we, we found the reason for the egg. Man, 
don't get to double spell. Need more life. I hate making the attack though, because that means we get to just take damage also. Ugh, could have used another mortify. Yeah, I know the Crusaders have Venice. Well, my opponent had lethal, they would have just tagged. But I don't really know how we're going to get out of this. Corpse Knight, Celebrant. Okay, so Corpse Knight. So yeah, I think we got this, right? I mean, I assume we can do seven points of damage. I don't know. Let me, let's me let count this out. So we play Corpse Knight. We play Celebrant. That's one. We get back Celebrant. That's two. We have three mana. We sack Corpse Knight. That's... So that's wait, wait, I said we had two. So that's three, four. And then we sack Celebrant, that's five, six. We sack Celebrant, that's seven. So yeah, we got we got seven. Yeah, hot guy. That was all you. That was all you, hot guy. Opponent was too scared to attack. I saw a cute little kitty over here. Then attack with all those other creatures that would have killed me. <laughs> Surprised hot guy stayed right there. So still after I sneeze so loud. Ugh. All right, what do we got? To Spark, Legion's End, Elspeth Conquers Death. What those two? 
the spark we basically just saw wrinkle oh man All right, so what are we taking out? Hmm. That's gone. One of these are gone. Atheros has been pretty sweet. It's either a Tome or Heliod. I'm going to keep the Tomes. There you go. Pet and Hawkeye. Yeah, Devout Decree. Devout Decree is not too slow at Sorcery Speed because it's, it's a two-mana card, it's, so it's definitely not too slow. But... So like yeah, if you, if you have a lot of black red decks, you can definitely you can absolutely play it. It's very good. Like it would be great here. It'd be it'd be like our best card. Um, we have Legion's End that's a little bit more versatile against different decks. Yeah, Devout Decree is awesome if you have it. I th I think over I think we have like a pretty okay matchup against red black decks altogether. And there you go, Shival. Yeah, there's the clip. Yeah, that was a that was a good turn. There you, there's this this little thing right here. If you click that, it changes the owl the the color. I think there's three. I think it's like blue, black or like gray, black and gold. There's three colors. And that's how you change it. These Rakdos, I mean, we talked about last match how Bone Crusher Giant is so good against me. Now they have just Rakdos Fire, Fire Wheeler also. Like, this is just not fair. Hey, what's up, Gator Frank? They're just playing Bone Crusher Giant Tribal. It's like the best card ever against me, and that's their whole decker, Bone Crusher Giants. It's their whole hand. This is not fair. Tome. I was kind of planning on playing Sarah for the scales, but decided decided against it because if they had something like this to draw an extra card, they would just kill the Seraph. So let's just get this Pyromancer out of here. You know, we're playing the long game. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, are you kidding me? Two of those things? The first one was already unbeatable. I mean, it's fine. I've just been sitting here on my lap. <laughs> oh, that was. Well, I like where we're at now with this Tome of the Guild Pact. I had to say something.
Bye, Hawkeye. No attacks. Lots of attacks. Hmm. All right, let's get Knight of the Ebon Legion out of here. Hey, Enigmatic. My day is going. My day would be going a lot better. <sighs> really, a skewer? Uh, well, my day was going better right before that. But no, day's day's going fine. If I just wasn't sick, this would this would be an awesome day. If I just wasn't sick. Um. Really like the new set. Have a fun playing. We got a lot of people. Oh, almost fourteen hundred people in here, which is awesome. Y'all are amazing. Um, we're playing fun decks. All right, how are we gonna do this? Two, three, four. I need another land. One more land. All right, let's go. Okay, well, there's land. Oh, never mind. This is not going to work out well for me. Never mind. Abort, abort. Never mind. I was going to bring back Hero. Right, that does the two damage to the Planeswalker also. So that would just kill Hero and kill Soren. All right, that does not end well for me. All right, abort plan. Sarah for the scales, new plan. What's up, Cruel Valkyrie? Getting that uh, tier one sub in here also saying, loving the new set, really excited for all the new brews. Oh, yeah. Favorite tie knot is the full Windsor. That's what I basically just always go with. It's my favorite. Attack. Okay. I'm going to block here and block here. Do I want Corpse Knight to trade with Fire Wheeler also? Yep. We should probably try to trade. Hey, what's up, Max Savage? Another resub. And lots of subs today. It's awesome. 18 subs. Boom. Don't forget the triggers. Tell me the guild pack is awesome. Tell me the guild pack pretty awesome. I should have kept one of those one ones back to block this Knight of the Ebon Legion, shouldn't I? Honestly, I just kind of played that pretty fast and loose. Are you finding this deck? I'm, yeah, finding it pretty pretty good. Hey. Hockey Shockey. That's a pretty cool name. Another Twitch Prime sub. Love, love how everybody's getting those hype boats in there. Yeah, our decks perform really well so far. Um, 
Oh no, we ran out. Oh, I should have played Temple first, shouldn't I? And then Scryed, and we would have seen that swamp. Ugh. Oh well. Alright, Vigilante. They're like almost dead. All we need is one creature to die or to untap. We can make, you know, we, we're going to do Castle Arden Veil. Vale. Oh, could I have, if I didn't use that mana, one, two, three, four, one. No, I would not have been able to just draw this and play it. But yeah. Okay, 2-0. Uh, yeah, Helios is, a, is not mandatory, no. Or Heliod. Heliod's not mandatory, but Heliod can do some crazy stuff. Um, I think it's a really powerful card. I think I think having one Heliod is good, because it is a, a nice, powerful card. Um, but even the second, maybe don't even need the second. Oh, right, I could have just swung all. Attack all, because they have to block, and if they block, they die. I'm not playing my best today with, with how I feel. I'll be I'll be honest, I'm not playing my best, but I'm still playing good. You know, found that lethal the previous turn. Games like that like those kind of games like whatever I know I'm just like a hundred percent to win. At that point I don't always play the absolute most optimal to kill them right then so I guess we go corpse knight first so what would be a replacement for Heliod um, could play a little bit more removal um, could play like Basilica Bell Haunt could have uh, some other like five mana card that's good anything could have Elspeth Conquers Death. It's a good card. This is going to be the Battle of the Drains. Ugh. I like all my cards. Well, I'm obviously, I'm, I need to keep Land and I need to keep Tome. So it's between Celebrant and Mortify. I'm just going to get rid of the Mortify. Hopefully we draw the fifth land this next turn. We didn't get to this turn. Hopefully we do next turn. This could be a long game. A very draining affair. Oh no. My Soren. Well, looks like the aerial assault is offline, as we're not Soren anymore. That's going to do a lot of damage.
<laughs> exile. Exile. Ah, uh, they didn't exile. Good hand. Good quality hand opponent. GG's. I wish I would have got rid of one of the celebrants and not the mortify. Right about now. The silly guild mages for him. So it gives me mana to activate Pitilus Pontiff. Okay. Wait, yeah, why didn't they just kill me last time? Couldn't they have just killed me previously? Why didn't they just do that on, on their turn? Before I even untapped. I was just dead. I was just dead before I untapped. Oh, because I, I shocked to have me die? Alright, well, <clears throat> getting rid of the Mortify was, was my big mistake. I didn't really consider the 4-4, the Shepherd. With Mortify, I, I definitely need to get discard Celebrate, not Mortify. That that cost me that game. If I would have just kept Mortify, then I could have Mortified that Shepherd right away. We're not taking as much from Grey Merchant, and honestly, we there's a good chance that we would have won that. Yeah, it would have been back towards like 50-50 at least. If I would have made that different decision. But, you know, we learned. Well, Unbreakable Formation doesn't really matter. Does exile the 4 4. Kuneros hurts us. Like it turns off Soren. Speaking of Soren, I think I'm going to take one out for Dispark. Yeah, we could put we could put the dog in the sideboard for the cat decks, but if it's it would only basically be for like this cat deck. Like it's just a lot worse than Heliod's intervention. Like we have Heliod's intervention against the Jun sacrifice decks. That card is just amazing against them. So it's like we're looking at I mean just so Kuranos is just pretty um pretty narrow in that respect but it could you know it's still good against like red black aggro and stuff like that oh i guess we put back a land put back that land sure why do people think that elspeth is bad The answer is Elspeth is not bad. If, if 
we're gonna talk about the uh, like the planeswalker deck elspeth and okay yeah maybe that one's bad i don't know no i wanted to use the forum <laughs> i can't even forum right for some reason i was thinking it was going to be like a th you know like a thing that popped up over here i, I don't know i just i was kind of played it like i thought it was going to be a prompt that popped up that said do you want to use your guild mages forum and i was gonna be like yes but a plus one, plus one counter on this and yeah, I messed that up. That's two damage right now that I could have done extra if this was a 3 3. That two extra damage it can be really important. Probably Murderous Rider. Wow, on the Celebrant. Wow. Not the Seraph. I think it just uses my mana better to use it to play the Castle Ardenvale. It's going to be worse if they have a Fenlurker and then they make me discard the hero, but I think it's just kind of better just to get this. Uh, get a free 1-1 one, one here, where if I, if I draw like another 2 drop, then I can double spell with hero plus 2 drop. Coming on back with that Twitch Prime. So, welcome back, Chaos. Thank you so much. See, it worked out. I'm going upstairs because if I if I try to hit Fenlurker, they just sack the Fenlurker. My big uh, that gets us to sub number twenty, another sub goal. My big problem is if they have another one of those. That card. My opponent has had really, really good hands both of these games. Very solid. It's kind of ideal. You know, Cauldron Familiar and into Noxious Grasp, your hero, and then Fenlurker, and then Murderous Rider, your thing, and get the Witches of it and go into, and then Grey Merchant, Grey Merchant. It's really just ideal. Same with their last hand as well. Oh, 
That was a good draw. That was a really good draw. It wasn't Soren good. Soren would have been the best card to draw, but it was probably the next best card to draw. I mean, yeah, it was the next best card to draw besides Soren. So I got really lucky there, got, drew my second best card, but um, I only had like three cards out of like 46 that were going to keep me alive, maybe four cards or something like that, you know, I'd, somewhere between three to five cards, I don't remember how much I sideboarded out. I really just don't have a good attack with anything else. Heliod cannot give Heliod lifelink. Heliod gives other creatures lifelink. And even, even if Heliod could give Heliod lifelink and attack with Heliod, then they would just block with Cauldron Familiar and sack Cauldron Familiar. If I attack with other stuff, it lets them block with this Murderous Rider, too. No, Castle will not have been lethal. They just do this in response to Castle and gain life. Why are y'all saying pun? There was no pun. People think that I could have castled for lethal? I couldn't even I couldn't castle and lifelink. So I, I would have been I literally would have been dead if I tried to castle. The game would have been over. Because I could not castle plus lifelink this, and then I'm I would not have just gained five life and I would have just died here. Oh, the game's over now. The shepherd draw. Well, I drew a great one with the Heliod. I can't be upset they drew a great one with the Shepherd. Really good hands, though. Yeah, like they stopped at like five lands and just had all gas, including a couple of Grey Merchants. Yep, GG's. This looks like a really interesting hand. Hopefully Hero survives. I think we go Hero, then Corpse Knight, then... I don't know, either Celebrant or Heliod. Hey, Odin, GG's. Yeah, I mean, I got a really lucky top deck um, with that Heliod also before. So it's all good. You had you had just really good hands both games. Like you curved out really well both games. And you got me.
I don't like this. Hmm. All right, so a sweeper deck. I don't like this. I'm not sure if I want to play Corpse Knight or Celebrant. I'm, I'm still playing one of those two. I'm not playing Heliod. I'm not sure which one I want to play. All right, so they have Veto. I'm not playing the court. It's basically, I'm just playing one of these two because I don't want to just play everything and just completely extend into a sweeper. So we're just playing one of those. So I'm going to play the Celebrant that will trigger with all this stuff dying. Honestly, maybe I was supposed to just play Castle Lock Twain and just draw a card this turn. No, we play Heliod. Ooh, no sweeper. All right, so this just gets Dovin's vetoed. I'm not going to play Soren into veto. Um, I think I just attack and activate Castle Arden Veil. Why didn't I play the Lock Twain? Should have done that, but I'm just going to activate Lock. I'm just going to activate Arden Veil at end step. You know, I could activate Heliod twice and give some stuff Life Link, and then put counters on stuff, but kind of assuming they're going to play Kaya's Wrath. And so I, I think Ardenvale is my best choice. And then I can follow up with Soren after Wrath. Basically making all of their cards not as good as they want. I'm not playing into their their stuff. I can just sit back and do this all day. the wrath and they're dead I think I probably shouldn't show them I can just do this Okay, so Duressin. We didn't see very much of their deck. So I know they have Vito and Kaya's Wrath. Like, they could just be Esper Hero. So I'm not sure if they're going to be, like, a full-on control deck or if they're going to be Hero of Precinct 1. Like, full-on control, obviously, would want the Thought Distortion. Hero of Precinct 1, I'm not, not sure. Like, we probably want Legion's End against Hero. Like, just have a couple of copies of Legion's End instead of Othakaya. Kind of thing. Hmm. No, we don't need that.
Castles are awesome, though. White Castle was great. I'll play the I'll play the thought distortion. Will the main board Kai's rather they're playing hero? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you can play both. I assume they have a third land now, because they kept that card on top. Okay, so not hero, from what we can see, you know, like, this is definitely not hero. So now I can sideboard out, mortify. I know my responsibility. Here we go. Good draw, keep drawing lands. Keep on drawing lands. Here goes nothing. Right on schedule. I'll protect you. Through feud or feast, you'll blow I the weak. Ashiok's going to be tough to deal with. Good. Temple. It, it is post Theros 2020, and I still see decks with no Theros cards in it. Yeah, of course. It's like day two. Whew, look at this Mortify. Mortify looking good. <laughs> what a mess I've made. Tom, Tom, Tome of the Guild Pact is just a, a mana lock that helps me cast this Thought Distortion next turn. I hope they, my best, yeah, they like Banishing Light Soren. Yeah, and then keep, they keep Narset around because then they're like, all right, well, they can't. Yeah, that's, this is my best play. That was the best thing that could happen for me. Get rid of this Ashiok. They're still going to absorb this to just to gain three life because it's just going to get exiled. At least they should. I mean, the best possible one was they didn't, you know, they minus the Narset, but I'm glad they didn't just play the Ashiok. Good thing I brought in that Thought Distortion. <laughs> that was a card. Just see ya. Alright, so we're not going to draw a card off of Othakaya because of Narset, but we get to kill Narset. We'll start drawing after this. Three and one.
That went really well. That went really well. GG's. Um. Yeah, we're keeping this. It's thinking like how I'm gonna sequence, but I guess we're just gonna go temple planes. Cool. I want another land. So I kind of want to play Pontiff with a third mana to be able to keep Pontiff alive. Bouncing. <laughs> what you bouncing? Don't worry. Hero. I got I could have sacrificed hero and to keep them from drawing a card. I don't really need to do that though. I'm not gonna crack this fable passage. I want to draw a land, so I don't really want to take a land out of the deck. Thanks, Wonderwonk. I'll kind of save that. I'll take a look at that later. Thank you. All right, my turn. Probably play in time wipe. And then we'll just formation. They may not play time wipe, I don't know. Get wick. Alright, so I'd still like to draw a land. Ugh. Well, now I don't get to use Unbreakable Formation to save my team. I'll keep them from picking Gadwick back up. Land would have been just perfect here to be able to have Unbreakable Formation also. And then untap Athreos. Not doing a very good job of getting that last land. Getting that sixth land. I am whole, I need <sighs> Oh. 
Gad looks pretty good. Good defense. Make me extend more. Okay. Couldn't handle what we had. Alright, so duress, thought distortion. Could play Elspeth Conquers Death. No, probably don't need that. Alright, gonna get rid of a Heliod. And gotta get rid of three more cards. Hmm. Atheros is really good while it's in play. I guess I'm, I'm getting rid of both Heliods. This is not a Heliod matchup. Sizes of the creatures aren't that important. I do like, you know, like a Mortify and Oath of Kaya kill Gadwick. I do like that, but we probably don't need six of those removal spells. So let's take out a Mortify. I guess Oath of Kaya is better because it goes upstairs also. And then I'll take out one creature. Okay, with Athreos, whenever the creatures come back, they aren't summoning sick because of how it's worded. How does that even make sense? No, yes they are. No, they're they're summoning sick. Because it, it dies or and has put it eggs out. No, they they are summoning sick. So yeah, they. Uh, the other person wasn't correct about that. They are. No, it, it does technically leave. Yes. It says when it, when it dies or is put into exile. Like, so it has to die or be put into exile. That's true, I am summoning sick. Good call. Hey, good job, Choco. Made it to Diamond. It's awesome. Good job. It's Lesney enchantments. Hmm.
Land drop. Yay, land. Yeah, yeah. I can definitely see not playing Starfield Mystic. I'm good with that. So, like, they bounce Cruel Celebrant and kill the Corpse Knight? Like, I'm fine with that. So, I guess they just have, like, they just have Planar Cleansing that they wanted to use. They want to kill the Cruel Celebrant, so they just want a Planar Cleansing. Um, no? Okay, just another Gadwick. Had the backup. Of course, I need to attack first, because if I if you play Duress first, they counter it, then they tap the Seraph. So I gotta get that attack in first. I mean, if it's time wipe, I'd rather block the Gadwick. I don't want them to pick Gadwick back up if it's time wipe. If it's planar cleansing, I'd rather block the 1-1. One, one. So, you know, is it is it planar cleansing or is it time wipe? If it's time wipe, they're, pro they're not attacking with Gadwick if it's time wipe. It's got to be cleansing. better than that. Come on back, cruel celebrant. I demand. All right, down to two. No, I'm not passing. I'm I'm definitely playing. I'm not gonna let them just activate Castle Ardenvale. Athreos doesn't really do a whole lot. That's fine. Land. Cool.
Yeah, it's a cool animation. <laughs> New deck idea. Literally only board wipes, counters, and card draw. No win con. I mean, you just play Castle Ardville. That's a win con. And then you're good. I mean, isn't that just blue white control? What do they have here that's not counter, board wipe, or removal? I mean, I guess, or board wipe, counter, or, or card draw. I guess this Devout Decree is not a board wipe. But they sideboarded in. Borrower is not technically a board wipe. That Brazen Borrower was a really, really good draw. Is a yeah, that was a great draw. Because now they can kill the Soren. I don't really know how they get through, like, the Athreos, honestly. You know, like, Athreos, Cruel Celebrant. I don't I don't know how they really get, get past that combo. All right, we are 4-1. We are back to another final boss. No, Formation would not have won it for us. I was, I was not even going to be playing the Formation. I was just going to hold up Castle Ardenvale. And because attacking with one ones is actually better than attacking with two twos because they have to block the one one and whenever they do, cruel celebrant drains. Final boss time. Ooh. Don't like that mana. I like this mana. All right, taking out. Put him back formation. Don't need this. Simic. All right, has to be Simic Flash playing on summon. Like, there's no other Simic deck that's playing, right? Like, there's no other Simic deck that could possibly be. Though Blaze, another brand new Twitch Prime sub. Keep that hype going. Thanks, Though Blaze. That's a good trade for me. Heliod's not doing anything unless we have the other creatures. Honestly, what what they're supposed to do is just let Heliod resolve. I don't know if they even know what Heliod does, but they, they should not counter Heliod at all. Because they just counter the next card I play. Heliod doesn't do anything on its own. All 
Um, yeah, I play. I play this. Almost out of cards. These unsummons. Like that's not a very good unsummon. You know, like that doesn't really do anything. They could this could just be a budget. You know, like they could just have budget replacement for Brazen Borrower with Unsummon. That makes sense. And no, I'm not mortifying a 2 2. I don't I don't care about a 2 2. Want to mortify ambushers and cards that kill me. <laughs> Thanks, Matthew. Yeah, we've had we have had a good set of decks today. I'm not going to make it to the last deck. I don't have I don't really have the energy to play another league. Man, we have almost we have 1350 people in here though. I wish I did, but I just do not still do not feel that well. Of course, as y'all have been able to tell. Pass to attackers. All right, let's let's go and play the Soren. Now seems like a good time to play it. Taking out, I don't want to minus two and then just let the uh, Krasis kill my Soren. No, no, you don't always get paired against people with the exact same record. So no, you, we don't know what what my opponent's record is. I'm still not going to mortify a 2 2. Look at that. Rewarded for waiting. Countering Heliod is the correct line if they have Ambusher. Why why is that? Why why do you think why do you think countering Heliod if they have Ambusher is correct? I mean maybe if they only have like the one counter spell, if they're not gonna be able to counter other stuff. I feel like if they have if they have Ambusher that, that makes it even more of a reason not to counter Heliod because you can just end because Ambusher can end the game fast, so you can um, have your counter spell for other stuff and help end the game fast. The 
because the ambusher tokens will deal with the creatures, so you counter the Heliod to stop the triggers. I still don't see it that way. Like the, if you counter the creatures, you still you just kill them with the ambusher and its tokens. <laughs> All right, so we have a good sideboard for this matchup with having a bunch of Noxious Grasp and Disparks and Duresses and Elspeth Conqueror's Death. Elspeth Conqueror's Death is sorcery speed, though. All right, Heliod, Athreos are out. Unbreakable Formation's out. <sighs> okay, Oath of Kaya doesn't kill lots of stuff. That gets replaced with this other removal. Mm. Chill. All right, I need to take out one more card. Probably going to be one of these two mana creatures or Tome. Tome's just like my favorite, though. I'll take out Corpse Knight. Honestly, maybe this should just be Pontiff. It probably should be Pontiff. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sick. You play this deck, you think Soren is the real MVP? Soren is pretty awesome. Which is why it's unfortunate that you don't get to play uh, Kurnos. Because of how it shuts down Soren. Okay. Having the information is pretty valuable. Which is why I went with the, the duress. No, I haven't played any mono white deck. Oh no. Ugh, worst card for me to see. That's rough. That was their best draw. For sure. I have three to Sparks, three. Noxious Grasp that we boarded in for Nyssa. So we have six we have six answers. Obviously we need to draw those six. Never mind. It was Drew Nyssa and Krasis. GG. All right, Elspeth conquers death in. One tome out. Honestly, I think I want to take a Soren out for the Elspeth conquers death, because they don't really kill my creatures too much. I guess they counter stuff. But yeah, we need we need this Elspeth conquers death also. Just get another answer to Nissa. They tap out for Nissa. Exalic, come on, deck. We need one more land. Ugh. This guild mage is four. I'm just always. Killing me. All right, well, we'll keep it with the spark to spark grasp. I mean, it's it's not a great situation for us. Not, not in this matchup, 
Disparka is better than Elspeth Conquers Death in this matchup because it's a lot like because you know, you have to instant speed get rid of ambusher like that's that's the real thing you have to get rid of ambusher instant speed. Really? Pay one? Like you just can't do it yourself? Oh, because I'm on full control mode. I don't have to tap it myself, I can just do it and it'll do it automatically. Please don't have more Nissas. It's already gonna be a problem enough to deal with this. Oh, I can't even, I can't play Mortify. Thanks, Fluky. Yeah, we're going to try to get, try to get a good amount of rest tonight. Wish I could just Mortify Island right now. Not want us to win. My opponent, I guess they played one gross spiral, but then they didn't just play a land this turn. So, like, this is, you know, they've had seven turns, seven land drops. We're still at three. So this lets me trade one for one with Love Struck Beast. Wow, they killed the celebrant. They left me the pontiff that trades with their island. Surprising. trying no we don't have any yaras in the deck i'm 
I'm surprised they want to trade here. That's not a very good trade for them. Still can't double spell. I guess that trade does open up now. It makes sense with Paradise Druid making that trade. Does open up Paradise Druid. Just can't win with no lands. Well, with just very, very few lands. We could have gone to five to look for more lands, I guess. But. Oh well. All right, so we went four and two. Yep. Sometimes that happens. Four and two because of mana screw. Yeah, there's 25 in the deck. Um, every time that, like, Guild Mage's Forum, like, sometimes, like, puts counters on, and that's fine. It does seem like every time that Guild Mage's Forum messes, messes us up, it's because we don't have enough black mana. And looking at this, there's three castles, four planes, two two black castles, four swamps. Like, is black mana more important than white mana? It it does seem like we're just always stuck on black mana, but there's there's only one difference in there. Like that is there are times that like that extra getting that extra plus one plus one counter is nice. Is it Tome a bad card? No, Tome's like our best card in our deck. Can we get to draw so many cards? What? What? Um, y'all need to watch the first time we played this. If y'all think Tome's a bad card, and watch the other time we played the deck. We didn't. I mean, just. I guess we didn't cast it that much this time, but last time we played the deck, it was like the only card that was giving us wins. I do want, I just want another black source in here. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Whether that's taking out planes, like one planes for a swamp and have it be 7, 7, black, 6, white. I don't know. But then, like, at the, that's the same thing. If we have 7, black, 6, white, extra, I mean, it's the same thing. I guess we could just get stuck on white mana. So could could just take out a forum for for another swamp. Um, I don't know, like forums, like it's not bad. Like just because like that game happened doesn't mean uh, doesn't mean it's like a bad card. I mean that that's the thing. It, that those games do happen sometimes though. Because um, hey, pee on a light. Thanks, thanks that Twitch Prime sub. Those games just happen sometimes. With with Guild Mage Forum, you know, like that happened like twice to us in here but there's other times you know, like getting those counters on your creatures are are valuable also i think i would you could go fourth fable passage i think i would just play another swamp and play one for them i think that's what i'd recommend doing yeah i think i think just you want i think just a one up for them because we have the castles to be able to use like with our mana also we don't need the forums and yeah i mean yeah I, I would do that i would take out a forum it's like yeah we got we got mana sinks anyway that's what i recommend doing um you cannot get the new lands on arena yet they're not on arena yet they'll be added in a future update they just haven't been added yet we're thinking the word on the street is like a couple of weeks or so. Um, field of Ruin instead? You could play a Field of Ruin. Um, yeah, I mean, you could play Field of Ruin. Uh, the, the other new card is pretty good, too, if, if you're going to be pretty defensive. Labyrinth of Scophos. That card's pretty good. This card's underrated. We got Castle Iron Veil, too. Whoops. Hey, what's up, iLegend? Another awesome Twitch Prime sub. 
but yeah anyway this is this is a fun deck to play i really liked it heliod uh, as we talked about heliod is is fine but probably not like it's not like a necessity but you can do some really cool stuff with heliod i think what i would want to do though i think i'd want to play one heliod one elspeth also I think this is a really good shell for Elspeth. I think that, the, like, the minus ability to make, like, the tokens and go wide, that works really well with both Corpse Knight and Cruel Celebrant, and it gives you stuff for, for Pitiless Pontiff. Um, and then, you know, like, when you have, like, the stuff die, you can bring it back from your graveyard also. I like Elspeth. Um, you can also be aggressive. You know, if you don't want to overextend into Sweeper, you can be aggressive with that minus one, get extra damage in there, and that extra damage also matters a lot with Corpse Knight, Cruel Celebrant. I think I like Heliod's like they're both like these are both like good cards like when you draw like the first one kind of thing. I think they're I think these are these would both be good one ofs in here. Kind of like the unbreakable formation. Um So yeah, I'd, I'd recommend changing that and I'd recommend changing the forum for the swamp. All right. Um A good Selesnya champion uh, Mister, did you see the? Or I'll I'll answer your question here in just a second. But yeah, there we go. So there's Orzov Hero. So those of y'all watching on YouTube, uh, hit that like button over there and leave those comments. Let me know what you think about Theros, all the decks and everything. Um, you know, what are you doing that you're having success with, and uh, how do you like some Orzov Hero, all that kind of stuff. But uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for the next video.